Good morning, everybody. Well, today we'd like to work Brie a little bit. We haven't spent too much time with her for quite some time. Brenda's giving her a brushing, and uh, we're going to see what we can do with her. Duke's being a bit of a pain over there. Brenda doesn't seem to mind, though. Okay. After we give lady, uh, after we give Bree a little bit of a um, training program, she will be going outside, and probably Duke and Earl will go out also. Um, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to do a few things with, with Bree. Um, I am the first to admit she has not been getting the work and care that I would have liked to have her he got this winter because I've been busy logging and I just, I just can't um, take care of everything I have going on at times. But it's not a big deal. Um, just by getting a few lessons here and there, it's very beneficial. And so that's what we're going to do today. So I will, before I take her out, I'm just going to quick go through and pick all of her feet up um, just to, to continue that um, with her. I'm not going to do anything. Um, I actually had uh, my one of my neighbors come up, uh, Andy from down the road, and he's been trimming, well he's trimmed her feet once or twice now, and uh, I'll have to have him come up again soon because I can see that they definitely need to be trimmed again. But she's doing okay. You know, she's not bad at all as far as lifting her feet up. Um, so I'll probably have him up here sometime soon to get more this done once again. But if this can be done just periodically, it's amazing the difference it takes. It, it, it is with him, but you can see she really needs a trimming. I could do this myself if I had more time, and I maybe I should just take the time, but um, Andy's a good neighbor of ours, and I know he can use the work, so I don't mind at all paying him to do this. Um, I'll have to talk to him soon and see if he can get to it. Because I can see it is time. So anyways, that's what I like to do and do it quite often if, if I can. So now... Can you show people what you mean by why you think it's time? Because... It may not be obvious to okay, them. Okay, that's a, that's a good thing. Now, I can pretty well somewhat tell just by looking at it even before I pick their feet up, but one of the big things that I can see, um, especially on their front feet, cause, partially because they're clean, come here, come here, okay, is the fact that, see this ring around here, the outside edge? See how much higher it is than the sole? So this really, really needs a trimming. Um, you know, it's got to come down a good half an inch to be level with the sole so everything's level. So that's what we need done. And as I'm looking at that, there again, I'm a slacker, I guess, because it most definitely should have been done before now. But those things happen. And uh, we're going to hopefully get on it soon. And also you can just tell like it, like right here too, right? I mean, it's, it's a little long. Yeah. Yes. So it's important to keep them toes short and, and the, the whole hoof short as much as possible. Anyways, I'll talk more about her when we get her outside so you can see her better. Oh yeah, I'll say to him right now. We have not been been have not been extremely happy with the way she's doing this winter. We feel that she's a little bit on the thin side. Now it's possible that it's just a a growth spurt. I'm hoping that's it, but I, I really I'm questioning it. Um, there's times where when the light is just right, you can actually see her ribs a little bit. Um, she's I'm sure growing both this way and this way, um, but she just seems to be a little bit on the thin side. Now, in the fall when we had them wormed, um, she had quite a few worms, and we were able to get the worms out of her because after we wormed her, we actually took another fecal sample and it came back clean. So we had got rid of the worms, so I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it would be worms now. But um, for some reason, in my mind, she is not as heavy and has not done as well this winter as I expected her to. So probably without a doubt we'll try to get another fecal sample just to see what's going on, see if she does have worms again. But uh, um, I don't know, we'll, we're not 
totally dissatisfied with how she's doing it, just that I don't think she's doing her best that she could. So anyways, I'm going to take her out and to get her out of here, I'm not just going to turn her around, I'm going to make her back up, which I do all the time when we, when we give her water. We'll back her out of this stall a lot. Usually it's an individual stall so they can't swing side to side anyways. With Duke here, she can swing side to side a little bit and she can spin right here if I was to let her. But I purposely make her back up every single time to get in the corner to get out of this stall. So if you can open that door all the way, Brenda, or at least farther, yeah, that's good. So that's what I'll do, we'll get started, here we go. She's very good at backing. Bye, 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 bye. So I put her right in this corner like this, oh, just like that, and then I let her come around. So we'll see if she wants any more water, oh. Probably not. Daddy wants to say hi. <laughs> I guess she's gonna drink a little. This time of year, as you guys know that have horses, is so difficult keeping horses clean this time of year. They go outside and play in the mud and oh my goodness, they're just a mess. But that's okay. Um, just, we, you just have to somewhat accept that, that they're not gonna be perfect. But that's not the issue that we're dealing with. Mud is not it. It's the fact that she's not growing as good as she could. So I'm gonna lead her around a little bit and see how she does as far as leading. We may try a few different things. And then later on, we'll put her on the, the scales again to just to see if she is still at least the weight she has been right along. This morning it's it's a little bit chilly out there. Earlier today I was working without my coveralls but um, I decided to put them on because it's, it's a little chilly. Okay girl, you ready to go? I mean, so we'll walk around. I can't even really remember the last time I even led her around. It's been quite a while now. She has, right from the get-go, done so well as far as leading goes. She really likes to be with the other horses, so just by pulling her away from the other horses and letting her be led around all by herself, is kind of, uh, for some some horses, really have a problem with it. But she's never really been that bad as far as that goes with her. Years ago, I used to raise quite a few horses. This was many, many years ago. I was a lot, lot younger then. But uh, I had way more irons in the fire. And I did a very, very poor job of taking care of my colts, teaching them to lead and teaching them to pick their feet up. And then I just, I just had way too much on my plate. Um, even now, I have a lot on my plate. And it's a little difficult sometimes, but I guess I must have to admit that I, I am, I'm forcing myself to do better because of you guys and because of YouTube, because it gives me content to share with you guys. And it's just great that it actually forces me to do what I should be doing anyway. So I, I thank you guys for that. So I'll swing around now and see if she will follow me up the steps on the porch, which she's done quite a few times before, but it's been a long time now since I've tried it. I went along whenever I did take her out, which wasn't too many times. Of course, the weather was such it wasn't safe to climb the steps because of possible ice, but it's, it's good today. So we'll see if she follows me up right up. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Howdy, girl. Good girl. Oh. Now I could take her in the house, but I've already done that, so I won't today. So, as we've shown in other videos, 
climbing up the steps is a lot easier than going down the steps sometimes. A lot of times they like to dive off. Careful, 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 careful. Good girl. And I want to teach them to come down those stairs really slowly, which she did really well. So we'll continue on. There is another, another test that I don't think I've ever had her do. Um, to tell you the truth, if I have, I surely have never shown it, uh, or I don't think I've shown it, but I don't think I've asked her to climb into the trailer. So today, I decided I'm gonna try it. Now she may go right in, she may not, we'll see. I do have a little bit of, I'm a little bit prepared for this test with her. Oh girl, ho, oh. oh. ho, oh. ho. Oh. So, what I've decided to do this morning is before I came out here, I actually have a, a pocket full of grain. And uh, I'm not going to hesitate to use a little bit of grain if I need to when I ask her to step up into this trailer. Hopefully I won't need to. If I don't need to, when she gets in there, I will give her a little bit of grain. Trailers are very noisy, especially aluminum trailers. <clears throat> this should not be any harder than stepping up onto the porch. Actually, a lot easier than stepping up on the porch. But when they hear the noise of the trailer, it can spook a horse pretty good. And the first step, which is the only step, is quite a bit higher than the steps going onto the porch. So I'll just give her her time and uh, if she doesn't come up, I will give her a little grain and see if that helps. Another way to do this, and a very, very, very easy and wise way to do this even, is to do it with another horse. So if I had Duke, for example, with us, put him in the trailer, she would jump right in, I'm sure, quite, quite handily. But being alone, it's a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna try a little grain. She doesn't even dig into it. There's a bite, come on. Hey, come on, come on. She's saying, why in the world would I go up there? Hey, okay. She's not even too interested in grain. As I'm looking at her from this angle, I can see her ribs. So that does not make me happy. Oh, come on, come on, come in. Come in. Good girl, good girl. She's funny because it seems like she she just has to make up her mind and then she just does it. Well, with a yeah. Porch. She did good, she did good. Okay, now I'm gonna spin her around. Oh, so before I come here, she's stepping on my pants, oh. Oh, 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 I don't want her, oh, I don't want her to dive off this trailer, but she probably will, but I, w I need to be prepared for that. Be careful. Good girl. Oh, oh, good girl. She did all right. No complaints. Oh. She really is a good girl. Be right, careful. So now, I think because of our weight issue that I'm concerned with, I'm going to put her on the scales again and just to see, whoops, just to see what's going on her, with her weight. Careful. 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 
So I've got that set at 700 pounds. She weighed 735 pounds oh, the last time. So let's see what she weighs today. Oh. Huh? 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 You can't move. Huh? 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 Seven. 43. Okay. Well, that's actually a little bit more than she weighed last time. So maybe, maybe really all we're dealing with is a growth spurt. I'm not sure. But I will let my vet know what's going on and see what she thinks and if she would suggest anything for us to try. So anyways, I think that's all we're going to do for a lesson for her today. Um, it's amazing how little time it takes to do these short lessons like this and how beneficial, how, benef how much it benefits them. But even these short little lessons sometimes in our busy lives, it's hard to do. So Brian, if you could shut that door. I'm gonna let these colts out for the day. What are you doing for? Can't want to try it. Come here, Bree. She's waiting for Duke. She wants a drink. After her exertion. Get it. Get at it. Keep him out. Wherever Duke goes, she'll go. Keep him out. I will. Earl's coming. Come on, Brian. What do you think, guys? Think it's gonna come in nice and clean tonight? He didn't even get cleaned off from yesterday. Yeah. I mean, I think they wanna stay outside in the mud. It's always a question, should I put them out or put them in? But today, I really don't have time to work them. William is not here today. And I need to do a little bit of sawing in the sawmill. So, they're gonna to have to spend the day out there. I should let Ken and Baron out also, but they can't go out together with Baron has his, sh his shoes on. I don't like to have him go out with other horses. It's just too risky. So we'll see. Um, maybe if I get my song done, maybe I'll even hitch the two of them up and give them some exercise. Well, good afternoon. We are in the sawmill this afternoon. And if you have been watching our videos, we have been sawn logs from Paul Smith's College that we brought home that we had logged up there. And our, our 16 foot logs are all gone. There's a bunch of 14 still to saw and a few random different shorter logs out there. But these are the last of our 16 foot logs. So I'm gonna be working on this today. Like we'd said, William is not here today to help me. So when I log alone, I log, I mean, I'm sorry. So when I saw alone, I saw differently than I do when I have help. I showed in a video just a little while ago, a little bit of time that we spent working in the mill with William helping me. So you kind of showed you how we did it there. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a little bit of how I do it when I'm all alone. We are sawing mostly two by, Two inch stuff, two by sixes, two by eights, two by tens, two by twelves, and they're going onto that wagon right there. And that works really good when I have William to help me because it just, if we take everything, if we drag everything back on this mill, it gets kind of congested really fast out back there. By doing it this way, it keeps all of the finished lumber, the 16 foot finished lumber, out of our way and up there. So today I'm going to continue doing it that way, but it doesn't work as well for me working alone as it does with two. But I will start sawing and I'll kind of talk over a little bit about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as the mill is going. 
before we start the mail up, there's one other thing maybe I'll show you even now. When I'm sawing alone, and even a lot of times when I'm sawing with help, we have this board return, which is this right here. And this will actually help drag the, the lumber right back to me, and then it hits this roller and can continue rolling right on down through here. And on the shorter stuff especially, we would just put them crossways here to be able to go out that door. Well, 16 foot log lumber is kind of tricky to get out that door. The door is 17 feet long wide, I guess, but it's still a little tricky getting out of there. That's why we chose to pull the wagon in and get the 16 footers out of here the way we have it set up. Um, if they were shorter and if I didn't have William here at all, I'd still drag it back to me and do something different back here. But uh, since I have him, it works great doing it that way. Um, but, uh, since I'm going to be done with the 16s today and I'll be going to some 14 footers, we'll probably do things a little bit differently as we do the 14 foot logs. So I'll kind of just start sawing and explain what I'm doing. Maybe jump around a little bit and edit a bunch of it out just so you're not watching the whole process. But um, just give you not, so I can give you an idea as to what and how I do things when I don't have help here. So because these are 16 foot logs, a lot of times I can get a shorter board off the top because of the taper of these logs. This particular cut that I started on, I realized I was a little bit too high and I need to drop it down a little bit farther into the wood to get what I am hoping to get. When I'm using the drag back to drag the lumber back to me, I have to have a good square edge. In this particular cut, I came out before it was at the end of the log, so it wasn't a square edge, so I wasn't able to drag it back. But now with the next, this cut I'm on, it should work fine and I should be able to drag it right back to me. So my first cut was an inch board, and my second cut that I'm cutting right now is a two inch board.
So since I'm able to saw all the way down to the log and leave all the lumber right here, um, it works best for me because I can do it that way. Then I can stop, even shut the mill off, and come down here and roll the, um, put the lumber in on the wagon. So the way I do it is I'll take it and I'll flip it like that. Of course, these are just two by sixes. The two by tens and two by twelves are a lot heavier, of course, a lot harder to handle. But um, this is quite a technique to handling lumber that I've learned over the years, like anybody would if they worked in a sawmill quite a bit. And technique is very important. Maybe I can even show a, a few of my uh, technique ideas with you guys at some point. the rollers to my advantage as much as possible and then instead of trying to manhandle this wood I never actually pick it up I just kind of do it pick up one side do a lot of flipping like this to bring it to place we try to do is keep this center of the wagon empty. I like to put a, a, a layer of boards down just so the sides across them easy enough. But uh, keep these empty and kind of build up our sides until the very end because it's more work when this, the center is filled up. We have no place to put the lumber and it's a lot easier just to roll it into place than it is to do any lifting. bigger maybe I can get a bigger log on here for you guys to so see what it takes to handle a bigger piece of wood the two by sixes are the easiest whoops I guess I left my GoPro a little too close to that log So this board, instead of being a 16 foot board, will be a two eight foot boards and one will be wider than the other one.
So this board here, I realized would make a two by 10 and my cant is already at 10 inches. So I decided I might still throw this right back on and edge it on the mill. I would have, if I'd realized it sooner, instead of dragging it back, I would have just slid it off to the side and then done what I'm doing right now. But uh, it worked out fine just the way it was. So here we have a 2x10, which is considerably heavier than the 2x6, but still. By using the roller to our advantage, we can still make it work. Slide it in place, flip it over, roll it in place. And it's not too bad. When William helps me, he prefers when I get down to the last two that I pick up these rollers right here and it picks both of them right up so that two of them can roll right out really easily together. That's what he prefers. I actually do not prefer it that way. I prefer leaving them right on the bed because I don't want to handle two of them at a time. He's young and strong. He can do it all he wants. For me, I'm at the age where I'm going to try and find the easiest possible way to do it. So that's what I do. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys have a great night and uh, we'll see you next time.